Hi, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your February 2021 full moon reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you are interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before I begin this reading and clear the energy space, once again, a reminder not to be scammed by anybody in the comment box below pretending to be me offering you a reading. That person is not me. I will not be soliciting you for anything. All right, so don't be scammed. Now, with that said, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right, so we have here balance, which is the root chakra. Truth, the throat chakra, and communication, once again, the throat chakra. Now, the left-hand side is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So we have the Ten of Cups, which is beautiful, the Tower. Now, that's to be expected. This full moon is in Virgo, and the next full moon on the 28th of March will also be in Virgo. So this is a very intense time for you. This is also, this is also a very powerful time. So just to know that and, and be prepared. We have the Ace of Pentacles, a gift just for you, which is brilliant, and the Five of Cups, change your mind, change your life. 
the Five of Wands, the Nine of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles. So here you are a student most definitely taking this gift. The Eight of Cups, the Three of Cups, the Death card, which is Scorpio Energy, time frame October 23rd to November 21st. The Page of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and the Four of Pentacles. Okay, the Outer Arena, okay, the Public Arena, that that's a little bit more intense than maybe you would like it to be. But it's it's not anything bad. It's just simply there. There's power here. Okay, so let's look at your your chakra energy for this time. We have the root chakra, and then we have the throat chakra coming through. This time, okay. It affects you and it affects Pisces energy the most. So it affects Virgo and Pisces energy the most. So not only is your sun going to be affected, but if you you have any, I'm getting excited here. Okay. So if anywhere else in your natal chart, there is Virgo or Pisces energy, that part of your personality is going to be coming out quite profoundly. This also very much affects earth sign energies, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. We're going to see these areas of our lives favored, okay, and regenerating, okay, in, in prosperity and in bounty and also in understanding and in truth. So we're challenged in these earth sign energy ways just a bit more, but we also, it is to be, it is to make us become more efficient in the way that we move forward. So I hope that that makes sense and that you, you understand that there's a power here that is, that is building up around us during this time. And I really do see you moving forward in this like crescendo of understanding. And that's why balance is so important. Now, during this time, balance is challenge. We have a challenge for our harmony, for our balance. We question things that we once thought, okay, this is like my secret truth, or this is something that is absolutely true about me. But during this time, we see that challenge a bit more and more and more. So here we're finding this balance, we're finding this understanding, we're coming into harmony with ourselves, we're looking at a greater picture of where we need to be and what it is that we desire. We're also balancing the sacred aspects of ourselves during this moon. So the sacred feminine, the sacred masculine, this sense of coming together with the softer, gentler side of our personality, the more kind of single-minded focus side of our personalities, these are going to be vying for our attention. And at our root, we want harmony. And that's going to be something that's really quite powerful. And it moves us to really looking for the truth within our lives. You know, speak the truth, speak the truth and find the balance. And so this truth is going to be so powerful for you. It's going to be so important, but it's also going to be something that takes courage because it always takes courage to speak our truths. And when we speak our truths, it's kind of like if people know that you speak the truth and if that's a part of your personality that people are well aware of. I'm just seeing, my mom has this needle point that she has hanging up on the wall. And it says, live in such a way that if anybody says anything bad about you, others will not believe them. And so here it's like you speak your truth and people might not like you. They might not like what you're saying, but they know that this is authentically and genuinely you. And so there is an air of understanding about them, the, an air of power to you during this time that you are absolutely embracing. The truth really does set you free and it does become this balance, this understanding, this harmonious coming together. And this is what you strive for during this time. This is what we strive for is the sense of truth, of harmony, of, of knowing what we want. Now with this Virgo new moon, new moon, full moon, there is the sense of finding our balance, finding our understanding, needing to search for that. And as we're searching for that, this is also the most discriminating of all the moons, which I know doesn't sound that nice, but the discrimination, it is the most discerning of all the moons. It is the moon where we sit there and say, this is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I'm working for. And that is absolutely admirable, but it can also be a time where we're not seeing other people's truths, because everybody has this mentality during this moon of this is what I'm going after. This is truth. This is sacred. This is what I'm heading towards. So when we have the throat chakra coming in and saying to us, embrace our truth, embrace our passion, embrace our understanding, we also have to know that as we do this, we can become very focused around our truths and it can make it very hard to see 
other people's truths, other people's ideas, other people's opinions. So holding to the Taoist practice that this and that are true, that there can be many different applications to the knowledge that is being presented to us is going to be so very important. And it brings us to communication. Being able to have that open communication is going to be a key um, turning point during this time, a cornerstone for you, because what you're going to see here is that there are challenges when it comes to communication. There are challenges when it comes to having yourself be understood, making your point come across. And so here with communication, we're not looking only at our verbal communication. We're looking at the multifaceted ways that we communicate with people. The fact that we read body language, facial expressions, tonal inflections. Okay, you'll also be very in tuned to the aura around people during this time. And everybody will be because we're all looking for the sense of understanding, the sense of connection. And so here, this is going to be your superpower, but this is also going to just kind of give you a little bit of a foot up on, on everybody else. So that's, that's really cool, but also making sure that your communication, that what you are saying and what you are receiving, okay, doesn't become, doesn't become too intense. So what Spirit is saying here is that you're going to be picking up on a lot of things from a lot of people, from a lot of different ways of, of connection. And that can become very intense during this time. So making sure that you kind of keep yourself just a little bit separate from the emotions, the, the needs of everybody else, that's going to be very valuable. Now we move to this full moon in Virgo, which is on the 27th of February. And of course, this is a time of connecting with our power and surrendering to the divine. This is a time when the spotlight is put on the last lunar cycle. And it's always good to reflect. And if we do our reflections in these small little ways, if we look at the last lunar cycle and say, how much have I changed? What has happened? How far have I come? What, what is it that I want? What is it that I still have to work on? That's, that's very doable. Instead of at times we sit there and we just kind of like uphold, uphold, pull up our whole entire lives and say, okay, where did things go wrong? This is a time of that sacred connection. And it's a time to, to surrender to the divine, to what it is that you want, to what it is that you need, what it is that you're, you're truly looking for. And it brings you to knowing that you are good enough. And I always found this and I always say it, but I always found this to be so condescending when I first read this card. Because I thought, oh, you know, it's it's patronizing. You're you're good enough. You're you're doing enough. It's it's just okay. It's like okay, patting a little kid on the head, type of thing. But it's not. It's saying that where you are at this moment, you are enough. You are good enough for where you stand. Perfection is something that we like to be told to chase, and it's something that we think is real, but it isn't, because there's always going to be somebody who's just a little bit better, a little bit better, and the records are always broken. Things are always, and people are always, you know, adapting and changing in such brilliant ways. Now, during this moon, this is the moon, again, when we're the most discriminating, when we're sitting there and we know what we know, we know what we want, and we believe that this is utter truth. But this is also a time where we find ourselves to be the most helpful. Now, we can argue that during this time, we might not be as helpful as we think we are because we have this set way of seeing how to do things. And when people go against this, this way of seeing how to do things, it can, it can grate on us. We can sit there and be like, oh my gosh, these people are so annoying type of thing. But just know that, again, in this moment, as you are moving forward, Virgo, you are enough. You are good enough. You are connecting well enough. And you don't kind of have to reinvent, reinvent the wheel because that's going to be something that you find yourself very drawn to doing. Reinvent the wheel, you know, push things further just a bit more. Here, we need to keep an open mind and we need to not let nostalgia take away the joy of the present. And you might say, Dane, what joy of the present? It's hard, I'm overwhelmed, you know, everything is happening, the world is chaos. How do I embrace the now? And how do I embrace it with joy and with happiness and with grace? And what we're going to find here is that we're opening up the doors. We're opening up the doors to being present in our own lives. And with being good enough, those doors start to become more manageable. All right. And what we're seeing here is a shift towards our optimism. We're going to be very inclined to live in the past. It is easy to live in the past. It happened. 
and we sometimes live in regret or we live in the joys of the past. But it's always tinged with sorrow because the past brings pain because it can never be relived. It can never be truly understood, not truly understood, but truly captured again because it is over. And the future is our delusion. And that is because it hasn't happened. I mean, who can prepare for all the twists and turns that we have gone through? Even somebody who is, you know, as connected to their spiritual path as you can possibly be will be surprised because that's what divinity does. Divinity surprises us. Divinity pushes us out of our comfort zones. The divinity says, you know, look at the world differently. Let, I'm going to shake things up. Let's shake things up. Let's see what happens. And that's what we see here with the tower coming in. But what you're seeing with being in the present is that you're embracing the power that is you. Not what you could be, not what you once were, but who you are right now. And I do know that when life is devastating, looking at who you are right, right now is not a good thing. Because it can be like, how did I fall this far? How did I accumulate this much pain? How did my life go so off course? But looking at the now, looking at what you're building for, and instead of making your future just constantly your aim, it is saying, this is what I want. This is what I'm heading towards. Fill, you know, the walls with pictures of it. Put them on the, as the, you know, what is it? The background on your phone. Do all these things to remind yourself of what you're working for, but be present in your truth, in your place, in your heart, in your now, and know that you are enough. That becomes powerful. That becomes profound. And you're going to see that this moon is forcing you to look at the whys and the what fors. And Virgo, that's very you anyway. Looking at the whys and the what fors, seeing things more openly, more honestly, as they contend to you. That's why you're represented by the, the hermit in the major arcana, right? It is the time to look inward. And that's what we're doing. We are looking inward. We're looking inward at what we need, at what we desire, and we're finding the solutions that bring us the harmony and balance that is what we're questing for. And you see as the doors open, and you see as your truth opens, you are, you are drawn to this place of quiet. This is amplified when we reach the new moon on the 13th of, of March, which is the new moon in Pisces. This is when new starts begin. This is where we, we find ourselves looking at, at things in a new light and saying, there is a beginning here. There is a way forward. So what we're doing is we're going to be seeing ourselves carefully opening up the doors, opening up our lives to the change that we want. And we're doing it, of course, with the, the full moon, but there's a power to new beginnings with a new moon. And this new moon has us moving towards something that, that changes everything. But it also has us bringing our preconceived notions forward and has us sitting there and saying, I'm just seeking what I want. And here it's like, no, seek what divinity wants of you. Because it's moving us to the new moon in Pisces, right? To the energy of meditation and contemplation. To the energy of sitting within your own self. Saying, how is it that I move me forward? What is it that I desire? Where is it that I am? And how is it that I connect with my heart? One of the most lovely ways, and I do feel it as a beautiful way of meditation, is just to sit quietly and just focus on breathing through your nose. Nose breathing, I've been doing it for a little bit now, and it, I find it just one of the most beautiful things that I have ever stumbled across. And just breathing through your nose quietly and either sitting or walking, you can go for a walk and just breathe through your nose. You can, you know, sit down and, and kind of crisscross your legs and, and breathe through your nose if you want to. But whatever it is that you are doing, we just close our mouths and breathe through our nose. It clears our mind in a way that I think is astounding. And it moves us forward to a place of awareness, to a place of making life a meditation. And that's what the new moon is calling you to do, to connect. Because you have the otter spirit here. And the otter spirit is telling you that you are never alone. And this is the spirit animal for February, which I know we're only in for like a blink of the eye longer. But this is the spirit animal that has been with us. And we are never alone. We are connected with divinity. You have the two otters making a beautiful heart. 
you know, you have this love, this compassion, this, this truthfulness leading us forward. And it's that connection with divinity, that connection with our angels, that connection with those who are truly important to us. And this is a time where we're told to stop swimming against the current. Stop trying to change the world into what you want it. And start letting yourself flow with how it is. And it doesn't mean you, you let things be unjust or anything like that. But it means you look at your world. You look at yourself. And you stop fighting all the time. We as human beings, we're so used to fighting. We're so used to sitting there and saying, you know, I'm moving forward, just have to push a little bit harder, just have to fight a little bit harder, I'll get to where I need to be. There is a need here to step back and say, okay, what is it that I need? What is it that I truly need? That's what I'll fight for. That's where my energy will go. But everything else that's trying to steal this energy, and we see it right here crowning your heart with the five of of wands. It's like, I can't give myself to everything. I can't fight every battle and I won't. And so here you start to see yourself stepping into your joy, embracing your joy, embracing the unity of yourself and becoming aware of your subconscious, becoming aware of the quiet voice inside of you. And then we move to the beautiful spirit animals of, of March, which are the whale spirit and the wolf spirit. And the whale spirit says here, to trust in the great mysteries. And the wolf spirit says, knowledge, turn knowledge into wisdom. And so as you're embracing the whale spirit and you're trusting in the great mysteries, the whale spirit is also the record keeper of the earth. It's also this great repository of knowledge. And it's sung out in the vibrational energy of the whale and of the songs of the speech. And so it's time to start listening to our inner voices and connecting with our power of emotion. And even if you just think of this in the abstract, you know, you don't have to sit there and say, oh, these are the spirit animals, you know, if you don't want to. Think of it, thinking of it in the abstraction and sitting there and saying in the abstract and saying, you know, this is the energy that flows through the ocean. This is the being that flows through the ocean. Let that being flow through me. Let that energy be part of me. And then with the wolf spirit, as we turn knowledge into wisdom, okay, this is a time where we connect with our sharp intellect, where we look at things honestly and openly for ourselves. We have that deep connection to what it is that we want, but also to our environment, to our place within the world, to our place within our own, you know, family structure or friend structure. And it's becoming completely aware of where we stand and what we want. And our strong instincts lead us forward to something more. But we are absolutely present. And that, that's powerful energy. That's powerful truth. It leads you here to really looking at what it is that you love. The Ten of Cups is, an, is and they all live happily ever after. Happiness, joy, success, prosperity, beauty, bounty. And the Ten of Cups, when we think of happiness, we all tend to think that happiness is one way. And the word happy, you know, is one word. But there are so many different ways to be happy. There are so many different truths to happiness. And we tend to think, oh, we're supposed to follow everybody else's path. You know, this is what happy looks like. But what if we open up our hearts and say, what does happiness look like to me? What is it that I truly need? What is it that I truly crave for my life? Some people, happiness is being around people all the time. Other people, it's being very quiet. Some people, their happiness, my brother, um, one of my brothers, his happiness is living in the city. He loves that. It's the best thing in the whole entire world for him. For me, it's living in the country, the quiet, the, the, the peace, you know, being able to go into the city when you want to, of course, when the world opens up and everything like that. But it's, it's being able to choose what makes you happy what happiness is for you. And we tend to think it's one way. It's like, oh, but this makes me so happy, so why doesn't it make you so happy? It's because everybody gets to choose their path of happiness, what that looks like for them, and build it into the wavelengths of the future, sitting there and saying, this is my happiness, this is my truth, and it helps to inspire the generations that come after you or the people that you meet, you know, because you're filling the world with just a bit more happiness than it had before, and our world needs more happiness. It leads us 
to the tower. It leads us to looking at the chaos, the way divinity has changed our lives, the things that we sit there and think, if I had utter control over my world, this would never have happened. And yet, at times, when you look back, not everything, I'm not talking about the truly horrific, but at times when we look back, we see that the change that divinity pushed us towards is better than anything we could have expected ourselves, left, led us on a path that was just astounding and so beyond what we thought. So here there is change. Here there is power. Here the foundation has been shaken to its core. And whenever I see the tower, it always makes me think of Humpty Dumpty. And I know that's such a whimsical thing to think of. But in the nursery rhyme, they say all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Brute force cannot change what has been broken, cannot fix what has been shaken to its core. Here we need the healers, the doctors, the caretakers, the nurturers. So when we're embracing a change or when we're trying to you know, adapt to this change that has been thrust upon us, sitting there and fighting it and you know, forcing things, it's not really the way to go because that usually breeds more frustration and more change and not change, but anger and despair. But it's when we step back and say, what is this truth? Why am I here? And what am I finding? That the world starts to open up to us in a profound and brilliant way. So we've all been through the tower change, the whole world has been through a tower change. And then individually, we have all been through another tower change. But it's looking at the power that is around us, the connection to divinity, the opening of the hearts, the, the moving of our truths that have come through this change. And what divinity is handing you now is a gift of prosperity. We're being handed this gift of prosperity, wealth, and bounty, these seeds to be planted, that have us growing to something more, that have us, you know, breaking out of our, of, our, of our comfort zones and saying, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I need. So prosperity comes. Bounty comes. Abundance comes as we open up our hearts to it. And here, Virgo, during this moon, it is a time to really embrace being the student of where it is that you want to be, of saying, I don't know everything. And I will not know everything. That's why we're embracing the mysteries of the world. But I'm seeing how to plant and how to grow and how to embrace my existence, my truth, my power, my blessings. And this has us changing our minds and changing our whole entire lives with the Five of Cups. And you see with the repeat of the number five here, you're moving towards freedom. And you're going to see things changing more rapidly than you had expected. So with the five of cups, you're going to look at the pain, the hurt, and the disappointment, which we can spend our whole lives looking at. And a lot of times we do. We spend a good portion of our lives looking at how things aren't going the way that we want them to. And we don't turn around and see the two of cups, the healing, beautiful love that is a part of us, that embraces us, that opens up to our truth, to where we need to be, to what it is that we desire. And this is saying here, change your mind and change your life. Change what you are looking at. Feel love. Fill the moments with love. Let that be the power that guides you. The moments, fill the moments that you can, the quiet moments with things that you love, with joys that you have, with, with blessings and truths. Even if it's just reading a book that you love or watching a TV show that that you just connect with and letting little moments of love into your life. Even if it's just like you can get like five minutes here and 10 minutes there of just embracing what it is that you truly enjoy. That changes, that changes you, that changes your world. And we have the five of wands here. We have the chaos around us, all right? And it's when you're embracing your love, but you also have the hurts and the pains of, of the world around you, of 
you know, the negativity that was spoken over you coming. And with the five of wands, we're looking at the chaos within ourselves. We're looking at the chaos outside of ourselves. And it's sitting there and saying, no more. No more do I get to live in constant chaos, in constant upheaval, in constant, you know, doubt and fear and anger. I get to find my balance. I get to embrace my balance. And that sounds like such an easy thing to say, but it can be a very hard thing to do, to know where our balance is, to know what it is that we desire, especially during this time where harmony and balance are questioned, where we're sitting there and looking at things that we thought were like set in stone. This is, this is what I need. And during this time, it's like, Ooh, do I want to change it? Like, what do I need to shake off in order to stand where I want to stand? This is why the whys and the how comes are so important and the what fors, you know, what am I going for? You know, why am I going for this? Where do I want to be? How do I want to be? And it's calming the chaos and it's breaking things down into doable sections and saying, this is my truth. This is how I'm moving forward in it. This is what I desire. This is what I'm moving towards. And it moves us then from taking the chaos within our hearts and saying, I see you. I see you loud and clear. And I'm finding a way to not have you be the boss of me. And then it moves us to the nine of pentacles. It moves us to a place of prosperity and abundance and a job well done. And as we're embracing this, we know that there's going to be hard work ahead, of course. But for this moment, we get to rejoice. We get to take in the beauty. We get to sit there and say, I've calmed the chaos for just a moment. I embrace my heart. And it brings us to being a student of our prosperity, a student of our bounty, a student of where we need to be. And as we study this, as we embrace this deeper knowledge, this deeper understanding, this deeper truth, it's being a student of what we're planting. What gardens have we sowed within our souls? And I like the metaphor of the garden because you can see the plants, right? You can see the plants, you can see the vegetables, you can see the flowers, but you can also feel if your garden is overrun with weeds, has been neglected. Have you been taking care of everybody else and not yourself? Have you been, you know, sitting there and focusing on one area of your garden and neglecting the other? What is it that you are growing within your soul, within your being? What is it that drives you forward? Because you're walking away and your heart is having you walk away from something you once thought you would love. And you're going to find that you're walking to a much better place. You know, you're, you're sitting there, you're leaving something behind because it's not right for you anymore. It's not right for your soul. It's not right for yourself. You're releasing what you once thought you would love. And you're sitting there and you're realizing it's not me. It might have once been you. You might have once thought, well, this is just like the bee's knees. But as we grow, as we change, you know, we get to see what's right for us and what isn't. And that's what you're embracing here. You're embracing this change. It's kind of like when a relationship ends. It can be absolutely devastating. And then you sit there and you say, okay, now it is time for me to move forward. And you can find that you're walking into a whole new world. And it's devastating, especially when you didn't want that end to come, but that end was thrust upon you. But it's again divinity saying, it's time to move forward. It's time to embrace this change, this power, this understanding, this truth. And it's better to ascend with the change than to fight it and say, no, I'm going to stay here forever and ever and ever. And then it becomes overwhelming. It becomes a fight of existence because you're not seeing the worth and the power of who it is that you are blessed to be. And it moves us to the three of cups. It moves us to hurt, to pain, to disappointment, to doubt and fears. That's what I see the three of cups as. It's those people who were supposed to raise their glass to us, but just couldn't. They couldn't celebrate us. They couldn't love us. They couldn't be what we needed. And yes, it devastates us, especially if these people were supposed to be 
part of our superhero, superhero pack, you know, part of those people who are supposed to be on your side, parents and siblings and, you know, and friends and partners, people who are supposed to be in your corner and they just weren't. This is a time when we look at this, we look at the negativity that was spoken over us and we sit there and we say, I see you. I see you for what you were. I see you for what you are. But you don't get to define me. You don't get to hold on to me. You don't get to curse me anymore. And so in the public arena, do not be surprised at all if you are faced with a tremendous insecurity that was spoken over you, that was planted within you when you were very small, when you trusted somebody openly and honestly. And then you find that you, you need to walk away. You need to, to find your voice. You need to stand in your truth and not let yourself be taken advantage of. It's so interesting because I was watching something about ghosting people, you know, when you just stop talking to them. And I thought, well, what's the difference between ghosting people and just saying to people who you know will pull you back into their web if they have the opportunity? Because you're a nice person. You want to be nice. You want to, you know, help everybody out. But with those type of people, if you open up the door, you'll feel that wave of darkness coming over you again. So sometimes, sometimes it is better just to say, no, I'm done. I'm not doing this. So that we can move forward in our own health, in our own bounty, in our, in our truth. So with the Three of Cups, it's looking at that emotion. It's looking at that hurt, that pain, that disappointment. And it's seeing where we perpetuate those wounds within our lives. It's seeing where we perpetuate that that chaos within our existence. Because we think of wound mates and we think of them in terms of, of lovers, you know, of people who perpetuate those wounds. But we also find ourselves perpetuating the wounds in our work, in people who tell us we're not good enough, in our, you know, in our friendships, people who kind of put us down in sly little ways. And we don't need that in our lives. And that's going to be something you're really focusing on here, Virgo. You're focusing on letting the toxicity, toxicity go. And it brings you to a place of rebirth. It brings you to a place of understanding the hurt, the pain, the disappointment you have been through. And this is a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new. This is a resurrection of what it is that you want. And it's looking at your being, your personage, and seeing that you are profoundly different than what you thought you were going to be. And that that's okay. Life doesn't go as we have planned. Here, there is a need for a bit of quiet, a need for a bit of contemplation of self, for looking at what we desire and saying, this is my truth, and I rise in that truth. We walk between the spiritual world and the earthly world, during this time, saying, where do I want to be? How do I want to move forward? What is right for me? So it's this contemplative, introspective time for you, where you find that you might be being tested more than you want to be. And that's, that's okay. It really is. Because you have a strength to you that is astounding. And it moves you to being a student of your mind, of what you desire, of what you stand for. And it has you looking at the leeches within your life, the leeches within your existence, and saying, how do I change this? How do I embrace my prosperity? And it comes from looking at the, the curses, the negativity that was spoken over you, and saying, this is not my truth. Because we hold on it's kind of like looking at that part of the garden that you were tending, that Spirit was talking about, and forgetting the rest of the garden, letting everything else become overgrown. Well, here, it's holding on to wealth in one way, because we have this fear of lack. When you become a student of your mind, and as you are a student of your mind, and your breath, and your presence, and your consciousness, and your you know, ability to stand forward, 
This is when you start to look at the pain and the hurt and the disappointment that has pulled you back. And you start to say, no, that isn't my defining factor. That isn't where I get to be my whole entire life. And you break away from the emotional vampires. You pull the leeches off of you. And you stand tall. Will it be a challenge? Yes, it will be. Will it be well worth it? Absolutely. So let's see what Luna has to say. How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Excuse me. <laughs> I got sleepy all of a sudden. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Virgo be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. Fantastic. So we have faith. Blossoming. Surrender. Oh, I like that a lot. Release. Time to release negativity. Work through your fears. You have the full moon in Scorpio. You have the new moon in Scorpio. You have the death card, which is Scorpio energy. So this is a very powerful time for you. Very powerful Scorpion energy around you during, during this moon. And this sense of facing fears, releasing these fears, and finding yourself being... It's almost like being a different person because of it. Being empowered in a way you didn't expect. It leads you to the full moon in Taurus, which says your dreams need a practical plan. Adjustments are required. And then you come through here with the new moon in Virgo, a time to give rather than take. So that is exquisite. You have your faith coming forward. What is it that you believe in? What is it that you desire? This faith embracing you, this faith moving towards you. And it's saying here, your faith is blossoming, right? It doesn't have to be a dogmatic faith. It is what you hold true and what you hold dear to yourself that gives deeper meaning to life. And it's your love. And it's also the chaos that you have been through. It helps, it has helped hone and shape what you believe in, how you believe and how you embrace that faith within you. How you embrace that God's head within. Because remember Brahma said, I, hope, I put the God's head within man because that is the one place he will never look for it. It moves us to blossoming. It moves us to a blossoming of our truth as prosperity is given, as this gift of wealth and seeds and bounty is given. It moves us then to a surrender, to a surrender to looking at the healing that is a part of us, to releasing the negativity, a surrender to the blossoming of our faith as we release the negativity that has held us back too long, as we release the chaos and embrace the prosperity, embrace the bounty. It brings us then to knowing that it's time to release. Our hearts are calling for a release, the negativity within our world within ourselves, that it keeps us from seeing our truth. It brings us then to working through our fears as we walk away from what we once thought we would love into what we truly love. 
we then have our dreams needing a practical plan. As we purge ourselves of negativity, as we are reborn, there needs to be a practical plan for our way forward. Adjustments are required. We can't do this the way that we've always done it. It's time to become a student of our breath, a student of ourselves, of our mind, of our consciousness, of being present within our bodies. And as we are, we make the adjustments to embrace a better life, a more powerful life, a greater truth, a, a honest, an honest truth of ourselves. And it moves us to knowing that it is time to give rather than to take. It moves us to sitting there and seeing that this is our time, Virgo. This is the time to fall into alignment with what it is that you want. To embrace yourself fully, honestly, and truly. Because this moon has you deeply reflecting on you. Give to your heart. Give to your soul. Rather than taking Rather than sitting there and saying, just power through, just, you know, kind of force it forward. No, give rather than take. Give yourself the gift of prosperity rather than letting everybody take it from you. It moves you, but it moves us to the subconscious message from Luna, which is will. The will, the drive is astoundingly strong within you. Embrace that will. Embrace that drive, embrace that focus. And then moves us to going deeper. Prosperity lies ahead. Strong Taurus energy here. Connect with that Taurian energy. Connect with that, that stubbornness, that sensuality, that determination, that focus. It brings us then to the subconscious chakra message, which is peace to be crowned in peace, to move forward in peace, to embrace the love of peace. That is everything. And that is what you focus on during this time. That is where the mind goes and the mind feels most at home. To look at peace and let it be a part of your life, your soul, yourself. It moves us then to the subconscious tarot message which is the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is letting your dreams become part of your reality again. Letting your dreams become part of your heart, your soul. So often we hide our dreams away because the world is cruel and we don't want the world to ruin our dreams. So we keep them on the shelf within our mind and we go to them whenever we need to, whenever we need that little kind of pick-me-up to have faith in our world again to say, this is why I'm here, this is my dream. But it's so hard to bring dreams into reality because we don't want people to laugh at them and ruin them. And our dreams change. You know, you can sit there and say, this is my dream. And then you give yourself to divinity. You let yourself move forward in the power of how am I creating my life? You know, how, how is it that my soul wants me to live? Where do I find my happiness, my bliss, my moments of connection and, and contentment within myself? And then you can see the dreams changing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. As they, they fit into you more honestly, more openly. And then later on down the road, you might see yourself taking it out or reconnecting with that big dream that you had and finding how it works in your life now so much more differently than you thought it would work. There's power here. There's power in belief, in love, in connection, in, in, in your truth. And it's opening up that world for you. All right, Virgo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as 
we blossom in our faith and stand surrendered to our truth. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Virgo. And may you have a blessed moon.